My name is Tony Campbell, I'm the Chief Crewman here at Portland, and I operate as a winch operator. Um, I've been flying for 23 years with a Coast Guard helicopter, uh, started at Leon Solent and came here to Portland. When we get a shout, the scramble goes um, in the building. <clears throat> it's my responsibility to go and pick up the phone, speak to the Coast Guard, find out the details, uh, where it is, what it is, how far it is. Um, and I will then liaise with the captain of the aircraft, will decide do we need more fuel, um, can we go, they'll have a look at the weather, uh, we'll have a quick discussion on what we're going to do. Um, I will then come out to the aircraft, give the coordinates to the uh, non-flying pilot who will put it into the system um, and then we'll take off and go. If a cable gets caught on say a fishing boat, as it did once out in the Atlantic with the, an Irish helicopter, it parted at the hook end and the cable then recoiled back up towards the aircraft and wrapped around the head of the aircraft where the rotor blades were turning. But you do not want that sort of situation arising. It could be catastrophic. If we go to a, um, a tall yacht or a, a fishing boat that's got lots of obstructions on board, um, we've got a technique that we use which is called the high line. The high line is a piece of rope between 150 and 200 feet, this one's actually a 200 foot high line. So it's a piece of rope with weights on the end. This is a five pound um, shot weight bag, but we can add more if we need to, depending on the wind conditions. Uh, and we can lower that to the boat. The other end is attached to the hook um, with a carabiner. And most importantly, it's got a weak link on. Uh, the reason we use this is because if this gets tangled around the, web, the rigging of a, a yacht or parts of a fishing boat, it'll part at the weak link. If we put the hook down on its own and that gets caught, then we have to cut the cable. If you lose your cables, you are useless as a search and rescue platform. When we get to a job, we operate the winch. Um, the winch is operated, we've got two controls here. The lower one is the, the one we use mainly, which is for the forward hoist, um, and the top one is for the after hoist. On here, we've got various parts that we use. Um, the main part, obviously, is the up and down, which is the centre part here, which is variable speed. And we've got 300 feet of cable, 290 feet usable. Um, on this side, we've got the winch trim control, which means at night when we come into the hover, the pilot has got no visual reference underneath the aircraft. So the winch operator will fly the aircraft only with a, a small amount of control, i.e. about approximately 10 knots, and we can move the aircraft forward, left, right, back, um, using this little coolie hat here. We had a similar system to the winch trim in the S61, which was called the AHT, Auxiliary Hover Control. Um, that wasn't a coolie hat, it was a, a little joystick we had in the back. The same sort of control, although it was slightly delayed, um, and uh, it, we use that on, on quite a few occasions. In fact, on one occasion with a Yacht C out in the English Channel with two Belgian chaps on board um, that had been sending up flares and had been sighted by um, another vessel. Um, and it had actually rolled 360 degrees. The two men on board, thankfully, were lashed to the boat. I was controlling in the back of the aircraft as winch operator. Roy was the winch man. Uh, and when we got there, we found the yacht was uh, moving up and down considerably. 50 or 60 foot waves um, with broken waters as well. Uh, and it was quite frightening when we got there. Um, Roy looked a bit apprehensive, but was good. He actually went down. Uh, we had three or four attempts to get the high line on. But unfortunately, the first time they tied it around the waist, thinking we were gonna pull them off with that. When we got them then to start pulling the high line, we put Roy on. Unfortunately, the first high line snapped. 
uh, because of the sea conditions and we tried again uh, the second high line snapped and then we Roy went down with what we call a mini high line so we had a high line in his pocket a shorter version he got that on board and then uh, managed to get on board to get these people off we got the first one off and then Roy came off with the second one but throughout the, the waves were breaking all the time and it was uh, big big troughs and peaks we did manage to get them off but that was in horrific conditions <laughs> 